I may be alone in thinking this, but the pacing feels remarkably slowed down. Normally it doesn't take this much long to clear out everything in the sky until everything gets to the point. I can't shake this feeling that something very bad is gonna happen. But it's me, the angry my fan, the guy who usually only review Eden Zero, and uh, the semi-retired despair reviewer, although after this manga is over, maybe we'll full retire. Who knows, it's not important. What is important is that this is Eden Zero, chapter uh, 8, uh, no, 182. First I cover page that shows Couchpoo and the Rebecca having a food eating challenge. Huh. Uh, well that will make one lose their appetite. We're also for formally introduced to Mother Got Aknuela. As Shiki, no sorry, as Siggy sees a space battle, he realizes that Shiki is here. And uh, Mother and God Aknuela calls her dragons her children. In a way that can almost make her an abusive parent. She sends her children, the dragons, that apparently she summons or creates to die. Apparently, she even mentions something worldly that she brought them into this world. And then we actually get to a very... to a scene that is remarkably gut-punched, to say it, the least. We see as... Uh, as, she, as Siggy remembers Dragon, he actually thinks back on that conversation which was the very first scene we saw of uh, this manga. And once he thinks about this, he just says that he was thinking about the one he thought of as his grandson. And now that he, ha and now that he has to kill him. You know, it's a, it's a remarkably heavy moment. Yes, it just once again digs just how deep Siggy has fallen, from the uh, compassionate, all-loving hero to a to a bad, completely evil, uh, no, to a bad, complete monster. You know, this is kind of unique, really. It's it's very rare in manga. You see someone who has always been all loving suddenly becoming a complete monster. Normally, a villain is always a complete monster. Granted, apparently, Siggy was always a complete monster. We just didn't know because he had lost his memories. But still, showing him to be all loving and then suddenly showing him to be truthfully uh, a, a complete monster is really is a really heavy scene. It is also revealed that the reason why God Aknuela is teaming up with Siggy is because she agrees with Siggy's views on having no human life forms. Which obviously implica implicates implicate that she is not human herself. Granted, she didn't really look human. She has long nails and three wizard eyes. But it's not also revealed yet if she is uh, also an android or if she's an alien. You know, in this pit, in this scene, she actually looks a little bit more beautiful than she did in the first scene. In the one she looked always older. It is also noted that uh, she is mentioning that uh, why is Siggy so uh, desperate to kill Shiki? Even mentioning something like uh, when Siggy says because he is a human. And now as the f uh, you raised him, you taught him strength and you taught him to believe in equality. Basically saying what the fans have been saying all, all the time. Why is Siggy so obsessed with killing Shiki? Granted, up saying he is obsessed is may not the right word. If he was obsessed, he would have actually actively hunted down Shiki and killed him like this. Instead, he has done the very cowardly methods of that. But it also may be very possible that he did a cowardly method because deep down, Shiki may actually be a coward, not someone who is believing in true strength. And all he says that um, he was just wrong, and that was his reason. With my own hands, I, he has created a threat to the universe. Why have you created a threat to the universe? Stop with the teasing and just tell us already. Why is Shiki considered a threat to the universe? Is it because he is connected to the power of the Cat Leaper which can use time? Is it because he is the gravity that can bind together robot and humans and for Shiki that is unbalanced? Is he the one that can actually unite everything? Or is he connected to the Mother Ether? There has to be something! It is also worth noting that his name is Four Seasons. And the Four Seasons Galaxy. So yeah, it seems that God Agnuela has some kind of standards. 
She of course agrees with this, even calls Siggy Lord Siggy. But uh, she apparently doesn't really feel like, oh well, that, this. The rest of it is a space fight against the dragons, as the dragons going strong damage. And so the Holy Army releases anti-dragon ether cannon, which uh, Holy mentions that uh, they had just in case they would fight Aknoella. And while it damages the dragons, it's not enough because the rest of them doesn't have it. So Hermito shows her deep intelligence just by scanning it a few times and even Holy herself saying that that shouldn't be possible because it took us years to develop this ether. She manages to do it in just 10 seconds. And that's Hermit for you. She is Eden's mind and she's very, very smart. Ugh, if Eden loses her, then they're screwed. The fact that Holy mentions uh, how frightening they are yes, shows some more that she's not to be trusted. So while they do have a weapon now that can hurt the dragons, it also consumes a lot of the arrow. So it's finally is uh, Homer's turn, because it actually turns out that she hasn't been entering the field yet. As we know, she's not a good marksmanship. No, instead she enters her own um, her own knight gear. We have mentioned a long time ago that Eden Zero actually did have knight gears, but we haven't seen them until now. And now Homer flies off in her own uh, knight gear, which is greatly modeled after samurai armor as well as uh, a Valkyrie with a ponytail. Warrior made 95, two arms. Then by combining the ether that um, that Hermito helped create as well as her swordsmanship since she's not a, a bullet uh, marksmanship, she manages to make quick work of the dragons. With that, a path is opened and so everybody flies towards Leonard now. The true battle, the true, the first wall has been uh, destroyed. Now they will soon enter the planet, and with it, the true battle starts. That's basically this chapter. Tumblings of emotions, really. Again, Siggy's complete monster behavior is really heartbreaking to see. But um, it's clear that he is a complete monster now. I'm just, but this also shows that he does remember everything he did as his kind self, so to speak. S but I'm also wondering, is he still hiding something? Because, I mean, it's no way that this is all an act. If it is an act, it's one of the most unforgivable acts I've ever seen. Um, it's just that there is some part in the stories that does not make sense. And God Agnoella. She apparently is the one who has created the dragons and brought them into the world. Hmm, that also must be dyed in a little bit deeper. Granted, we don't really know much about it. But yeah, to Orasian says Galactica, the four dark stars and Sigi. Eden Zero and allies ha are beginning to fly towards Leonard. What awaits them now, I have no idea, but uh, at least I hope we can soon see the fights. All these setup things is really not much of it all. It was just more of an emotion of it, seeing these things. But showing Hermito being so very smart was always refreshing. And the, the night gear, yeah, that was cool. But you give me your thoughts if you have any.